God be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O God. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe in also in me. In God's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and pre to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas replied, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to Abba God except through me. If you know me, you will know my heavenly parent also. From now on, you know God and you have seen God. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us God and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen God. How can you say, show us God? Do you not believe that I am God and God is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but it is God living in me who is accomplishing these works. Believe me that I am in God and God is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to God. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that God may be glorified in me. This is the gospel of hope. Praise you, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. may be seated. And I just love the fact that I get to see things that perhaps you don't see. I was witnessing the Elmos as they were putting the Bible back and they were getting back into place. Almost like a fist bump. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> Good job, layman of the worship. We're grateful for you this morning. Yeah, give them a, a hand prize. <laughs> Let's pray together. God of grace and mercy, we are grateful that we are your people, that you call us by our names, that each and every one of us created in your divine and loving image is made worthy and holy because of your love. Help us this day, O oh God, as we come into this sacred space, into this house of worship, to be mindful of the ways in which you have called us to live, to be, and to have your will among us. Breathe through us, O oh God, on this day, that we might be vessels not only of change and transformation in our own lives, but change and transformation in the world, so that truly we might say with Jesus, may your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Bless us then as we open hearts and minds to you again this day, that we might not only hear your voice, but believe your voice, and in believing your voice, live in the world by your voice. And so now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. 
In the name of Jesus, in whom we pray, amen. Amen. So about seven o'clock this morning, I received a phone call from my mom asking me about Alan. They had just received notifications about it in the United Kingdom. And my mom uh, often forgets the time difference between the United Kingdom and Great Britain. And it feels to me sometimes that we forget to switch our phones to silent when we come into worship this morning. (laughs) So I'm going to invite you. Because for some reason we get notifications all the way throughout worship and, well, you know. It wasn't part of my sermon. (laughs) Friends, we come on this day following the resurrection of Jesus into a sermon series that we've been preaching here at Cathedral of Hope called Building Blocks. It has been our hope and our intent that in this season between Easter and Pentecost that we might find some building blocks of our own faith. Uh, Some building blocks that perhaps sustain us in the good times and in the not-so-good times. The, the, The building blocks of our faith are the building blocks that Jesus was trying to teach his disciples. And that those building blocks are things that we then put deep root into our own lives, deep root that will sustain us, strengthen us. As our hymn said, in these tumultuous days, it seems that those roots need to go deeper. In a world that is constantly moving towards hatred rather than love, it seems to me that I need all the faith that I can get in order to sustain me day by day. And all the tragedies, all the woes and the sorrows and the ways in which peoples are being victimized and challenged, how often this word of God that we believe in has been weaponized. But it's important for me as a person of faith and hopefully for us as a congregation to understand that our building blocks are things that we need to develop. And so through the journey of those disciples following the resurrection of Jesus, uh, through their living experience and examples, we have been building those blocks for ourselves. Uh, Thinking about the disciples who had great questions following that resurrection. Was it true? Did it really happen? Many of those disciples who went back to ordinary ways of living, the scripture tells us that many went back fishing. Some dispersed in fear that perhaps they were next to be hung on a cross. And the ways in which Jesus would reappear to them in the days following the resurrection, in the words of familiarity that Jesus had shared with them on many occasions, peace be with you. Do this in remembrance of me. The story of the road to Emmaus, as Jesus walked with those two disciples, and following a day of conversation, as Jesus would slowly reveal himself to them, at the very end of the day, Jesus took bread, broke it, and it was in that breaking of the bread, in the sharing of familiar story, in the sharing of that which was embedded in them, that they came to see Jesus. Thomas... And the disciples who were in that upper room, Thomas not present on that first time, and the disciples trying to convince Thomas that Jesus had been risen, and Thomas who would say, unless I see the nail prints in the hands, unless I see where the sword went into the side, I will not believe. And then Jesus who reappeared to them seven or eight days later, Thomas with them and called Thomas to him and said, now put your hands here, put your fingers in the nail marks. And Thomas, who in that experience of revelation came to a fullness of belief for himself, thinking about for ourselves how the experience of Jesus is the thing that perhaps convinces us to believe. It's not just the doctrines or the traditions of the church but our own personal experience of a divine presence, a God that is in us, a God that lives in us, the miracles that we see happening in our own lives that often help us to come to believe, to understand that there is a God, a power that is greater than us, that somehow is present. And in those statements of belief, then we are called to to live and to get a, a spirituality that is personal. I believe that is what Jesus' purpose and mission was, was to examine and to offer to us a relationship that was personal. 
Not a relationship that was just through ritual or, or through a priest, but a relationship with God that becomes intimate, a relationship with God that becomes personal, a relationship with God that we can relate to. And the good thing about that is it's different for every single one of us. For we all know God in our various different ways. And today, as we read this scripture, perhaps that's what Jesus was latching onto in this sacred text from the Gospel of John. Now, it's this sacred text that I often use at funerals and memorials. It begins when Jesus is meeting with his disciples and trying to again reveal what was to come. And Jesus, who says to his disciples, do not fear, trust in God. In God's house, there are many rooms, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be also. And then poor Thomas gets a bit of a rap again. When Thomas says to Jesus, but we don't know the way. How can we get to where you are going if we do not know the way? And Jesus says, but I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to your Abba God, your God in heaven except through me. We usually end the scripture there, but the reality is that the scripture continues to move on and you witness other disciples also then getting in on the act, getting in on the questions, the curiosity, the uncertainties of where Jesus is going and how they might get to that place. I think there is a truth for every single one of us, I know it is for me, that there are many uncertainties of our faith. There are many uncertainties of the story. There are many uncertainties that we sometimes just accept or perhaps we even gloss over because we want to have faith. But the truth is that I believe that our God is big enough for our questions. I think our God is big enough for our uncertainties. I believe that our God actually encourages us to have those questions and those uncertainties. But it's often in the questions and in the uncertainties of life that we get deeper into our relationship with God. That if it really is just about a set of doctrines that we have to check mark against, then where is faith? Where is the depth of our relationship with God if it's all spelt out for us? For we are human beings having a spiritual experience. We are those who are encountering a world that is damaged, a world that has been transformed, a world that still needs the repairing arm of God within it. I have this fantasy, perhaps, that on the day when I'm escorted out of this earth and find myself before our heavenly God, because that's where I believe I'm going, that I have many questions for God. In fact, I have a list of them. I'm hoping that someone will be kind enough to burn them with me when I die, for I will be cremated, and that somehow that will manifest itself in heaven so that I don't forget any of them. Because I have many questions. Many questions of a faith that was presented to me, of a God that is so almighty that God is still able to reach down through the heavens and fix everything. And I'll be honest, my biggest question for God is, why did you not do it? Why do we live in a world of suffering? Why do we live in a world where hate seems to be the prevailing force right now? If that is the kind of God that I've been sold in my faith experience, then why did God not just come to Alan yesterday and take the gun away? Those are important questions. Those are important understandings. And I've come to a, a realization that, that that's not the way that God is. That God is really made manifest in the world through you and me. That, that God is made manifest in the world. As Jesus would say in this John's Gospel, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God except through me. And that that me is the way of love. That we get to God through the ways of love. That we get to God by manifesting love in our lives. That we get to manifest God by being those agents of change in the world. And that whilst thoughts and prayers are, are something that we offer in all circumstances of life, 
if they're not accompanied by action, if they're not accompanied by something that changes the systems and structures of our world, then thoughts and prayers are useless. They're platitudes. They're excuses for doing the hard work of transformation. And I'm tired of Christian folk who say they believe in a God Almighty, but who do not manifest that in the way in which we get to be agents of love in the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to manifest God unless you find the way of love, unless you find the way of peace, unless you find the way that is not just about doctrine, but is about the ways in which we have built a firm foundation, building blocks in our lives that lead us to do something. To call upon our legislators, to call upon those who have the power to make real change, to do something now. I'm tired of writing on my Facebook page, enough is enough change. It's what we're called to. It's the ways in which we make God real in the world. The scripture has often been used to believe somehow that the only way to get to God is by becoming a Christian. No one gets to God except through me. But I want to be honest this morning. As many of our staff gathered this past week in the National Day of Prayer at the Myerson, gathering in prayer with Christians, our Jewish siblings, our Muslim siblings, our, our Hindu siblings, with peoples of all faiths that are represented in the Dallas-Fort Worth region, I want to be honest that I could not sit there and believe that somehow God has written off all of these other people and believe that somehow only Christians are getting to heaven. My, my questions and my uncertainties about that reality has led me to an understanding that when Jesus invites us to the way, the truth, and the life, that the way we get to God is by being love. Short and simple. No matter what our pathway may lead us to that understanding. And I've also come to understand that I'm probably a Christian because I grew up in the West. And that there are others who have never even heard of Jesus. But I believe on that day of glory they will be with me in heaven. Sitted with God and God's uniting love that truly is the pure essence of what we are called to manifest in the world. And I know there will be some people who will completely disagree with me, and that's just fine. This is still room enough for us all at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ to be here and to struggle with the uncertainties. And as much as it grieves me to say this, I believe that there'll be Democrats and Republicans in heaven. <laughs> that didn't get as a loud of applause as I hoped for. <laughs> our uncertainties, our questions, the uncertainties of Scripture, the uncertainties of the ways in which we manifest ourselves in the world are all good because they are a building block that cause us to get deeper in our faith and in the depth of our faith sustain us in the good and the not so good. And they compel us to be those agents of change and transformation, not just in our life, not just in our church, not just in our state or our country, but to acknowledge that we are citizens of the world, a world that God created, and a world in which we get to show up to make a difference. May that be a building block for us this day. As we journey with Jesus, who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to God except through the way of love, 
And if you have seen love, you have seen God. I don't know about you, but I see a whole lot of God in this place this morning. May we find that for ourselves and manifest it so that it may be the building block today for every single one of us. God bless you, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen.
And now unto God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God, known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.